I teach at Wake Forest uh, University at the Law School, the Business School there. Uh, I'm also a West author and for a number of years have worked with West uh, with respect to academic uh, technology. And I'm, I'm going to introduce Law School Exchange today. Uh, and the reason I'm going to introduce it, again, is because Law School Exchange is intended for uh, law faculty, as you'll see. Uh, so I want to introduce it to you from the perspective of a law faculty member and how uh, he or she might begin to use uh, exchange to show some of its fundamental kind of basic uh, intended uses. And as you'll see, there are all kinds of other possibilities that, uh, that come along with it. So I'm going to give you a broad overview of exchange from the faculty member's view which for our purposes we'll know is the very simplistic view of <laughs> technology uh, because we, the kind of work that, that most of you do in this room working with faculty is that you don't get real complicated with law faculty with uh, technology. Uh, so we'll take kind of the overview, the simplistic view of this and then uh, very quickly I'll turn it over to the experts with respect to, with respect to law school uh, exchange. Uh, Heidi Bowe who is with Wes is one of the chief uh, technical architects and developers of Law School Exchange. She's, this is her full-time job, and she's worked on it uh, for a number of years with uh, several colleagues uh, in Minnesota. Uh, and Egan, Pat Sparks is, uh, I think of her as kind of the business owner of Law School uh, Exchange. Uh, she'll be responsible, not so much for the technical aspect of it, but for Kind of the content management uh, side of it. So, what I'm going to do is to give you uh, a broad, uh, this broad overview, uh, and then Heidi will talk to you a little bit more technically about how some of the features actually work. Uh, Pat will talk to you about kind of the business aspects of it, the principal imagined uses uh, of it, and then also with this is Kelly Mickelson, who is the is the owner of, uh, of TWIN, the West Education uh, Network. And Kelly will be here also to talk to you about uh, how TWIN fits with Law School uh, Exchange and the integration, uh, the integration there. The, these are not really distinct products. It's all part of a, of a larger whole. From a faculty member's perspective, uh, as a teacher, and this is really what this is principally designed, is, is to help teachers uh, teach. It, you know, there was the time when what the teacher had was principally the hard copy uh, casebook, which we still have, which we still love, because a lot of us like to see our names in gold leaf on that on that hard uh, hard copy, uh, and those are not going uh, not going away. And then teachers with the mimeograph machine and the copy machine began to violate all kinds of copyright laws by making copies of extra stuff uh, that they would distribute, uh, distribute in class. Uh, and then TWIN and technologies, other course uh, management systems come along. With respect to TWIN at West, this opened up all new kinds of possibilities with respect to, with respect to teaching. First of all, with respect to materials, you can now very easily download materials uh, from the web, from, uh, from uh, various kinds of sources. You could upload your own materials and then very easily distribute those to, uh, to the students. You had to make those hard copies. And those materials very often were linked uh, to Westlaw, which, uh, uh, which made them even more valuable. And then you could build in links to all kinds of other things out there, including, to, as I've been saying for many years, uh, it's very easy to build in a link to, uh, to Lexis uh, within, uh, within TWIN, which is nothing the West folks ever like for me to say, but it's possible and I've done it and others have too. So it just enriched the materials that you, that you had. And then TWIN brought other kinds of functionalities for teaching along. We began, we had the, the discussion forums and we had the quizzing function. So we were able to enrich even more the environment for, uh, for teaching. And it all came off of that hard copy book and then distributing materials and TWIN was in the beginning, I mean its principal use was for distribution of content, which by the way is the business that West 
uh, and Lexes and others are in. It is distributing, uh, distributing content. Not just particular forms of content, but the, in any kind of form that customers, uh, that customers, uh, the customers want. Lossal exchange is a further extension of, uh, of that. Uh, what it will allow teachers to do, again from the perspective of a teacher, is that exchange well, is going to be a place, is a place now, and it's in kind of a final, we're calling a final beta form. And we just, we just earlier today in a meeting made up this term, final beta. We don't know what that means. Uh, well, I know, but, it, but it's hard not to. Because, because those terms have meetings with the folks here. It, it is, uh, it's released, it's out there, it's, it's being used, it continues to be developed, and will continue to be developed. Faculty members who are using it now, any use they make of it, any materials that they put up there in it will be there, it's hard. You know, so it's a final release in that sense. You're not going to lose anything. But it's still, there are pieces that are being developed and will continue to be developed, just as been true with TWIN through the years. TWIN is always in a state of development, usually driven by faculty ideas of, of what we need. And I know that the owners of Exchange want your ideas about how, uh, even at these early stages, the things that we, that we need to that we can have. It is first, kind of fundamentally, a mechanism for collecting and distributing content, which again is what West and Lexus and Hasman and, and all of us, uh, all of us do. Right? Provide uh, content with, with value, with value added. What's different here about Exchange is a is a law faculty member, and this is only accessible by law faculty. So students can't come in here and browse. This is law faculty, but faculty members can upload their materials of any kind, of any sorts, to, 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 this, uh, to this system. Uh, and whether it's their own material, some material they've taken and fiddled with, whatever, they can upload material. In TWIN you upload material, and it's for the students in your, in your class uh, to use. And there, were, there are background mechanisms where you can share a course, a TWIN course across law schools, but it's not a principal, principal use. With Exchange, a law faculty member uh, uploads whatever materials that she uh, that she wants to, original or fiddled with or edited or whatever, any kind of materials that she wants, teaching materials, PowerPoints, uh, briefs of cases, any kind of materials that could be used for teaching or research, anything that she's working on, and it is then, if she wants it to be, available for law faculty at all law schools in the country. Uh, this is a system for law faculty. So she can upload this uh, material. If she wants it just there for her own use, that's fine. She does not have to display it to the world. She can keep it. She can have her own personal information depository if she wants to. And there's no limit on the size documents or materials or how you can put up there. And there's no limit on the amount of stuff that you can put up there. So you can put your, all the stuff up there, and if it's just for your own personal use, uh, that's fine. If you want to share it, which we expect people will, then not the world, the law faculty world can see that material. And if they see a use for that, for instance, a teaching use, or maybe an outline that you put together, maybe some set of quizzes for this subject, who knows, your take on some current event, whatever that you have uploaded. If you see some materials that another faculty has put together there, then what you can do is you can collect those for your own personal use, but you can also make those available for your students. So if you're getting ready for a course in this or that and your own exchange, and there are all kinds of searching features here, and you find some materials that you think would be helpful for you in teaching and for your students to see, you can collect those and make those available to your students in two, in two ways. One, this is completely integrated with TWIN. So if you have a TWIN course, uh, and you've already got materials there for your students, and you find some materials, some content, on exchange, you can 
designate that material, you can check those boxes and have that material, this is a technical term, sucked right down into your twin ports, uh, wherever, wherever you want it to be. Plus, if you've got some good stuff in your twin course, it's going to work the other way. You can pop it out, another technical term, pop it right out of that twin course back over into exchange. Right? So that there will be this seamless, uh, this seamless uh, connection. If you're not using twin, that's okay, because on exchange, you can collect those materials for your students in a course, a site, on exchange that your students will have access to. Again, they cannot roam through all of the materials. They can, their only access will be to the sites that you've created for them on, uh, on exchange, just to get those kinds, of, those kinds of materials. So here we have a way for law faculty now in their own channel, in their own network, to put up materials that they can uh, share. Uh, and can be used. And Heidi will show you how to do that. It's very simple. You have all kinds of copyright options that you can select. You can tag the materials. You can do all kinds of things to, to make it easier to be found by other folks, uh, other folks out there. And as Pat will explain to you, West is going to use this, of course, as a channel itself. And West is going to be putting tons of stuff into this uh, channel. And I think it should get into more detail, but essentially all West content for legal education will be available in electronic form through Exchange. Everything, nutshells, case book, everything that West has in legal education will be available through this system. And eventually in slices and in pieces where you can you mix and match and do all kinds of, uh, kinds of things, okay? But its first purpose, of course, and, and, and driven really by faculty, is faculty putting you know, stuff up there. But this other, and this then will mean that faculty can load their materials, share it. I can find stuff uh, from uh, from another colleague out there that she's using. I can put it together with West uh, materials and also foundation materials. When I'm saying West here, it would be West and foundation materials. All of their stuff, as long as the authors agree and consistent with copyright will all be available through uh, through law school exchange and eventually in pieces and chunks for all kinds of combinations, rich combinations. Just imagine the kind of courses, niche courses you'll be able to put together with these kinds this kind of materials that are uh, that are out there. Uh, so it is it is content focused, it is content uh, driven, uh, but of course it's people using this content. So just as twin expanded the kind of functionality a teacher had, law school exchange expands it, uh, expands it even more. There is a social uh, networking component to this uh, to this system. Uh, you won't have friends on this system, you will, but they'll be called uh, colleagues, uh, and it will work much as a social networking uh, system. You'll be able to create uh, groups uh, on this uh, on this system. And we've already got some of that that's started. So Laura Cooper's labor law group, the center at the University of Minnesota, is, is going to uh, be all kinds of groups. And again, it's, it's open. This will not be refereed in, uh, in any sense. Law faculty will be able to go out there, put this material up, create their, create their groups, and we hope that that kind of communication in this channel will then create more content that will be fed out to the, uh, to the, to, to the network itself and be available. And so it will become very organic. Uh, a mix, of course, with the material that, uh, uh, that West has. In, in my case, I mean, I've started using it, and again, this is, most people don't know about this, not that it's been hidden, but it's been in, in beta form, now final beta form. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is true for beta at lunch, because it is, but it is. You know, we all know, we all, and all people, you, uh, you understand. If you, if you go here, we're, we're logged in under, I think, under, under my name, uh, under under the, the materials uh, 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 folder, I mean that's going to be uh, that's going to be essentially where you know uh, all the materials are that are up in this uh, up in the system. But again, you'll be able to search and be uh, very very rich uh, search. Uh, but this is some of the stuff. If, if you go to to uh, to my materials, yeah. yeah, that's where we are. My materials. These are things that I have I have uploaded, and I designate when I've done something that's public so they'll be available. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a fairly new uh, casebook in, in payments law. Uh, all the teaching materials will be out there. Uh, 
they're pushing they're pushing me and my co-author Reverend Matthews to do a hard copy uh, teacher's manual, and I guess we will. But in our case, for the payments book, for you know, for every chapter, we have a teaching outline. We have answers to notes and questions. We briefed all the principal cases. We have powerpoints. We have quizzes that the that faculty, if they want to, using the book can get these quizzes and upload them on Twin. And so you know, you'll have that kind of that kind of. So I'm uploading all those those kinds of uh, all those uh, uh, materials. Uh, and we have a site web paper, yeah. but with respect to groups. This will just give you how I'm beginning to use it. Uh, the group we've created, here it is, Payments Law and Commercial Paper, uh, which is going to be essentially a site for folks who have adopted, uh, who adopted our book. Uh, all this material will be there for them, but we're also putting all the material out there because it may be helpful to folks who are not using the, not using the book. And no, we won't charge them, uh, even though they're not using the book, it'll be up there and available to them for, uh, for free. Uh, and these are some kind of the baby uh, uses that you that will be made. It, it's uh, eventually, pretty soon, the blogs feature will be uh, activated. So blogs can be created through this uh, system by faculty, by individual faculty members, by groups, uh, and eventually they will be accessible on the web. So they'll be open. It will be limited just to people getting on in this system. Uh, so there'll be all kinds of functionalities. If, if you think of Twin as a course management system for a faculty <coughs> member. I, I think of Exchange as an everything management system with respect uh, to your teaching and to your research and to your uh, publishing, particularly the research topic. If you've got a draft of an article you want to put up there for people to see, there's a, there's a place to, to do that. So this is a way for a law faculty not just to manage their course, their courses, which of course they can do through this, but working with but to really manage almost every aspect of what they're doing as teachers, including their teaching and including their uh, research. Bottom line, though, is this system is very wide, it's very deep. I mean, we must have spent a lot of money putting this together. It's very pliable. We don't know what all the uses will be made, just as the Twitter folks had no idea about, <laughs> you know, they didn't. It's going to be, and that's what's so exciting about this, who knows what kind of uses, but the system will support that kind of, uh, of, of innovation with respect to this system, because it is not filtered, it's not refereed, uh, it's out there for law faculty to use however, uh, however they want, uh, and also as, as a channel for West to put content including content that can be adopted in electronic form, put together for students, and sold to students through this, uh, through this system. There will be an e-commerce uh, piece that's behind this as well. And it will be possible, as Pat will tell you, for faculty members to come up with their own materials to put up there for sale. For sale. If not, not through West, just through your own. This will be a marketplace. But if you come up with content, that you design for faculty to use or for students to use, you can put it up there and faculty can adopt it for their, uh, for their students. Uh, so instead of adopting a you know, traditional casebook, having that sold at the bookstore, you can put your materials together in this way, maybe some West Foundation materials, maybe this colleague who's put some material up, package it together, a kind of custom publishing in electronic form, and make it available for, uh, for, uh, for students prices on all that sort of stuff, at least some of those materials will be marshaled up to the market, uh, to the marketplace. But that's still under development as well. But that gives you some kind of broad overview and how I see this fitting with other stuff that West has done. It's not distinct freestanding, it's all part of this kind of growing whole that is designed to be organic, that is designed to provide as many ways of providing content and also providing functions for good and effective, effective teaching. Uh, and now I'll ask Heidi if she'll kind of drill down and show you how some of these pieces uh, work, and then Pat will talk about the business aspects. Thanks, Steve. Uh, honestly, Steve covered so much that really explains a lot about the site. And I'm, as I'm going through, feel free if you have any feedback or questions to just shout them out, and we'll go through it. 
Uh, and I, I do want to reiterate exactly what Steve said. This is not meant for us to monitor or even know. When we look at groups, if you and your legal research and writing professors at the same school all use an Aspen or you know some other Lexis book, whatever it may be, you can have a group on here, and that's what you discuss is your usage of this other type of book. That's our purpose is meant to make this an open venue for you to participate with faculty across the country. That's the purpose of the site. And as well as exchanging content and, you know, maybe enhancing what you're doing in your class and making it easier for you and less time consuming. So we are excited about it in that way and open consistently to any feedback because it's meant to be for you. So we really would relish any feedback we could get from you as you go through the site. When you anticipate making this available? It is 100% available now. So if you go on to exchange.westlaw.com, you could start loading content, you could form a group, you can use it freely from right now to forever if you'd like. And honestly, it's, it's ready to go. And what Steve said is 100% true. What you load on there right now, the groups you form, all of that is preserved as we increase functionality. You're not going to lose anything, even though it's prior to this been a beta or whatever it may be. We're keeping all content in all groups as we go forward. You'll just see additional function. So, yeah, feel free if you're really bored over this summer <laughs> to just start, you know, hitting the content, please do. Uh, what we'll do is this home page will kind of be your initial communication. Uh, when you load materials, when we load our own materials as Weston Foundation Press, we'll have the ability to feature materials, and they could be yours, your personal materials, whatever it may be. They might be West. They're materials that are new to the site or being used frequently that are of interest to a lot of people logging on. When you, you'll be able to choose that, yeah, I would like my group or my materials that I'm loading to be featured. I think they're really good and helpful and, and faculty would find them useful. So this is one of the locations when you first log on, you can see what is new on the site. Generally, these rotating ads that you're seeing right here, what that's going to be is site related. You know, hey, this new function is here, click here and check it out, whatever it may be. And then you'll be able to easily search. There's a three-tiered searching mechanism. So as I search maybe for Steve's materials, I'm able to do that. And then what you'll see in the search results is I'll be able to see everything that Steve has added to the site. I'll be able to see anything that, um, any groups he has formed, and see if he's also on the site. Of course, if there was seven other nickels on the site, they'd all come up as well, but that's exactly how that will work. And you're always able to add materials and search as you go throughout the site. That mechanism will be apparent to you and ready to go at any time. So once again, going back to the home from my navigation bar, uh, featured materials, groups, collections will be exactly what Steve explained. That's what we're building out, and this is the increased functionality that you'll be seeing as we go along. Right now, you can add single materials and have them loaded on the My Materials, which you saw earlier, you'll eventually be able to piecemeal things together and make more of a folder, if I can put it like that, if you're used, used to, on your desktop, making a folder and then making smaller folders within and kind of categorizing your content. You'll be able to do that here as well. And then, I believe Steve mentioned blogs, and I can just show you what some of the blogs will look like. And by the way, once I have a colleague on the site, we can converse on this site as frequent as we want. It's recorded and kept for you, and it's, it's kind of easier than email. You know, when you're sifting through emails, oh, when, did, when did they say this? Was it three weeks ago? Whenever that is, now you have a, a place right online all the time that's kept where you can correspond professionally with another person. So that is an ease of use as well. And then we'll have frequently add, ask questions, tutorials, all of that will be on your home page as well as this is just kind of a taste of what blogs will look like as well as so you could create something similar to this also this is what we'll call law school news for a long time west would publish just a front and back of a blue piece of paper that um, different law schools across the country would send us updates that's what this will be now in electronic form so any notifications we get from schools this is going on here will you post this this is um, what's happening across the country we're having a cali event we're having this and that that'll all be able to be easily found here, right on the site for you. Um, 
So that's one of the big things. Uh, to go into adding content, which is what we really hope you will do, we would really love for this to be something that you use to add content and to communicate with other people. I know that um, there was a faculty member who came up to the table today and said, well, this would really be nice because I teach this small course and there's not really a book for it, but I know I have material and I know there must be some other people who have some material out there and maybe we could exchange ideas and content instead of having to search or feel on my own. So this is really a wonderful venue for emerging subject matter as well as the old um, strong subjects that are still out there that we have a lot of content for. And I know Pat will go more into that. But so this is just the idea of being able to add comments, communicate easily, reply, you know, gosh, it's wonderful that that happened, congratulations on your promotion, whatever it may be. All of that could be done here if you'd like. Um, collections, which I have nothing to show you, but it will be looking similar to our groups, which I'll go into, and it'll just function very much like a folder system. Colleagues, this is where, um, if you haven't found them in a search or didn't have anyone in particular you wanted to search for, but right now you just want to see, and actually these are already people already registered on the site, um, potentially using it and loading content. So these are actual real members. I think we have about 170 as of right now, and it changes daily. We haven't really promoted it hugely, so we're really happy that even 170 people are on here so far for us. We think that just goes to say that there are people interested in looking for this. Um, so I can just take a look and see who's out there and see who's loaded pictures. I can easily navigate um, if I know my colleague's last name. Maybe I saw them at a presentation. Maybe they literally are a friend that I know teaches over there. I can look and see if they are available and have registered on the site. This will only have registered users. It's very easy to register. It's literally just saying, hey, I want to be allowed on the site. You maybe say what subject you teach and you just go right through here. So there's nothing really to do in that sense except to just make sure that it's okay that you're on the site. So it's literally that simple. And then you're here. You can invite other people to join, get as many people on here as you can in a group, things like that. So it's that easy. And then you can also see who you made a colleague on the site. And also start conversations and take a look at who I'm conversing with. So right now I could be having a conversation. Steve and Justin were talking about something. And so all of this is right here for you. Does that make sense? Any questions on that part of it? I, I hate to even say the word. But is there a we would love to have a mobile version of this. I think that um, that is something that we're looking into so that um, your iPhone or whatever you may have, your BlackBerry, um, BlackBerry gets a little bit more difficult because they actually have a lot of different platforms, yeah, unlike the iPhone. Good Very nicely done, you probably, so, <laughs> which is part of what I do. I, we um, create iPhone applications, we have Black Stuff, Digital, and all that fun stuff. So we would love to, and we're actually looking into RSS feeds and allowing at least some of this message board to be available right away, or emails of the group. So thanks for saying that, because then I can go home and push it. There were so many people interested in <laughs> putting this technology to use. Um, so yeah, so it's that easy. I can I can request that someone become my colleague and, and start from there. Um, I can just pay for the upload materials just in this group especially. Yes. I should, yes, exactly. I'll make sure and go over that. So, um, and then once again, if I wanted to, as Steve was saying, add materials. By the way, this is, once again, as private or as public as you want it to be. So though occasionally this might look a little foreboding, I just want you to know that you could literally touch about three lines here, click upload, and you would be done. What this also does, though, is we're asking for different metadata so that if you want your material to be found, you're able to really tag it properly and have people find it right away and say, wow, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So this is meant to be, as Steve brought up too, a site where it's as big or as little as you want it to be. Maybe literally I just want to load my 10 objects and these documents is what I pass through the twin each day or link to my Blackboard site and that's how I use the site. And maybe I get on here every day and I check out what my group's doing, I look for new content, I'm constantly using the site. So it's as broad or as minimal as you'd want it to be in that fashion. When it comes to loading content, you'll be able to initially load material, URLs, and create a document right on here with our document editor. 
uh, you'll be able to load video and audio as well. We're initializing that component to be available by about August, and we'll constantly increase the ability and the size that you can load. It's going to be about 30 megabytes for now, but that's just for now. We know that people probably want to have classroom sessions on here that they're, you know, transferring or whatever it may be, or show CLEs, whatever it is, we know that that's a function that we need to be increasing. Right now it will be a smaller size, but we are constantly, yeah. So unlimited total overall file size, it's just the pipeline that we're working to expand. Correct. So you could put 40,000 things on here, it's just the size of each of the 40,000 things is at a limit, but we don't limit the amount you can load. If you want to load 40,000 things, actually, that would be great. Well, you could call me. I would we might give help. <laughs> yeah. We, oh, gosh, we could give prizes. Yes. Prizes sound really good. So I'm just going to browse a document. I'll just, yeah. Oh, question. Sorry. Yeah. That's right. What, um, it's probably in your, your terms of service, but who owns the material that you upload? You do, if it's yours. We do if it's ours. Um, and as you'll see as we go through, and that's a very good question, thanks for bringing it up, is we don't, we don't want to control your content or the site. This is up to you. If you're abusing copyright, you're abusing copyright. If we're abusing copyright, we are abusing copyright. So it's your own, it's your own site. It's your own usage of the site. Um, so that's a very good question. Uh, so I can browse, find something. I can load. Let's see. Title it, whatever I want. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe this is just for my private documentation. I can say whether I'm, I am the author or editor. It might be something that I'm loading from the New York Times and I'm not. So I'm not claiming anything in particular. Maybe I'm loading it in a private setting for my twin course. And I just say, you know, I'm not the author, but for what I'm using it for, as I read it, you know, I can load this and push it to my class through time. So I'm not worried about it. I'll check that I can do this. If I have any notes, maybe um, I am making this public, but I'm saying, you know, this is a New York Times, this date and time, I'm not claiming anything by it, just thinking it might be helpful for your class on torts. It's about toxic torts, whatever it may be. You could do that, make it private or public. I will say when it comes to private documents, you can still share them. So if I don't want it to be found in a search, and by the way, anything public on this site will be found by any user of the site in a search if they're searching for it. Private means only I see it, and it's not searchable. But in the sense that I may want to share it with a couple of faculty members, I have that capability. They then have no capability to share it. Only I do. So it is pretty much a read-only document for them, unless you're allowing, there's so many things, but unless you're allowing them to download. Maybe you're saying, hey, co-faculty, Here's my private document. You can download this for yourself and feel free to use it. But you have complete control over your content. It's yours. Uh, so then from that point, um, there's also faculty-only materials, which will not be able to be pushed to TWEN, regardless of who load. You would have to actually contact the loading um, user of that document, so the submitter of those materials. Uh, we'll use this for our teacher's manuals. We, of course, don't want any of those to go to students. This can be used as a quiz bank. You don't want anybody accidentally, even in good faith, pushing that to students if it's something that's being used across the site, um, across the country for exams or quizzes. So you can add initial uploads, say, you know what, no matter what, even if you accidentally are trying to push this, it can't go to the student-facing portion of our site. And then you allow download or not. So in this sense, you might have this be a private document, but you know the people you're sharing it with, they can download it or you're making it somewhat of a read-only public document. And so um, I'm happy to load this. I'm happy for everybody to read it, but I kind of want to control who's actually using my document. Because the nice thing about the site is regardless of its um, public status and regardless of whether or not you're allowing download, it's very easy to contact a person on the site and just say, I found this article. It looks great. Um, I see you don't have it to be able to be downloaded. Do you mind? you know, either sending it to me or whatever it may be. So it's an easy communique. They could even change the status of it and say, oh, I didn't know. That's fine. I'll just go change it and feel free to find it again or look at it in your favorites and download it. So there's a very easy, there's a nice ease of communication in that way. And then this is where you're either choosing a certain, certain copyright. Oh, yes. Do you generate statistics? 
We will have users and usage. So what that would mean is you'd be able to tell who's using your document, should it be public, and how many people are using it. Is that kind of what you mean? Like see, yeah, like I mean, if 100 people have seen your document? Yeah, because you know, B Press and SSR generate yeah. statistics so that you can try to assess, and it's very sophisticated mm -hmm. so that you know bots and things like that, they're excluded, it's a very sophisticated system, so that you can try to assess with some validity who's really reading the whole document. Mm -hmm. um, it's down the whole thing. Right. So you have generate, and they generate and send them to us on a monthly. Mm. Like so are you going to do that so that we would have the same assessment to us? Yeah. That would be the feedback that we'd love to get, knowing that that's something you want, that that's what we can build, something similar to that. Right now it's a little bit more rudimentary than that, in the sense that you'll be able to look at your document and see the usage. But knowing that, especially for a faculty member like you, and what you're producing, and that that's important because you want to see what is being used and read and um, maybe progress in that fashion. That's certainly something we can look into building into the site. Right now we don't have that same capability, but that is not far-fetched at all. So that's good to know as well. Um, yeah, so you're choosing either, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Creative Commons, but it's more of a licensure status. Maybe you're loading something and saying, you know, you can use my document, but if you do, please give me attribution. Or you can use it and manipulate it. This is really just a syllabus, feel free. Um, or maybe it's truly a public domain document you're loading, or it's traditional copyright. If you're using it, you need to request permission from me. So it really would depend on, on what you are requesting at the time. If you're saying you're not the author of the material, you, um, you really don't have the licensing options because you're not licensing anything, it's not yours. So those get grayed out as you'll see right here. But if I'm saying I am the author, I certainly have free choice on my content to state what I'd like to regarding that content. And then the additional information is the part where, even though this took me a while to explain, by the way, it defaults to the most private. So that won't ever be a problem where you're adding something and think, I don't know what I did there, is, and is it out there? If you don't recall changing anything, it's probably private and in your materials, and you can change it and edit it later. This is just the initial stage of loading, but all of this is editable at any time on your document. Um, so really, when you load this, if this is all you did, even though I talked for way too long about it, it probably would take you about two minutes, you know, at the most. You would just make sure it is what you want and browse and hit upload. If you want it to be public and you really want people to find it or want to give a good description of why you're using this in your class, you can feel free to do that. You can feel free to choose a material type to select a subject. And this will allow you to have select multiple subjects at the same time so that you can decide how many of these actually are pertinent to the document you're loading. And, th and this, is, this is very important if you do want folks to find it in connection with the registering for the system. Because when you register for the system, which gets just very simple. Yeah. Your name and, and your, your Westlaw ID shows that you're a faculty member of what school. Mm -hmm. But it will ask you, you'll have the, the option when you register to select the subjects that are of interest uh, to you. And that's important because you'll also have the option as a user of this system to have when somebody adds something about torts or First Amendment or whatever, some subject, or they've identified the subject that syncs with your areas of interest then if you want to, you can be notified that you know, so-and-so has added this kind of material and you're subject to it, you don't have to do that. Right. So that becomes very, very uh, important. And you can put any kind of description and add as many tags as you want. Obviously, you all know better than any group in the country that that tagging is so very, very important for the index when you're searching and finding uh, these things. Exactly, yeah. On the, on the subject, subject matter, you yeah. topics, are they tied in with the key number, uh, are they the same <coughs> topics in the key number? They're not as verbose as those. There's probably about 150 to 200 subjects listed that are pulled from Westlaw tab, tab names, so they're a little bit broader as well as the West Academic side. If you ever looked, there's probably about a total of 200 um, subject areas that are listed. So that's what's here. Um, and in order to combat that, because we did receive feedback like, but it's constantly emerging, you know, um, our education is constantly emerging and we have different things coming up every time. There's a different class name. So that's why we have the tags where if you can, at least for now until we have an established subject area, okay, I do need to add international yada yada to this. Um, that you know that maybe it is 
something related to animal law. But I can put in my tags, well, this is specifically about equestrian. You know, so you are still able to really tag it appropriately. Plus, the search searches your content. So if it is something emerging and somebody types in a term that probably wouldn't come up, if it's in your subject matter or what you're loading, it'll be found. So that's another solace that, um, that you'll able, be able to find some of that minute information out there regardless. Uh, and then, you know, uh, do you want others to leave comments? And by the way, this comment moderation is in a, once again, not its full-fledged state. We'll be able to allow you to monitor your comments. You can have some choices whether or not you want to even allow them on your document. So I'll show you a document here very quickly as well. So this is, let's say I loaded that document, and I'm just going to go to, let's see if this is something that lends itself well. Okay. So on this document, um, by the way, and I'll go down to the comments and finish up that last thought, but what's really nice about this, and sometimes what happens when you load documents is you get it in the HTML format, and it doesn't look like how you made it look, this retains it. Um, Technically, what it does is it takes whatever your Word, PDF, whatever your document is, converts it into PDF, and then converts it into this very nice flash form. And that's why you'll see I'll be able to take notes with it. I'll be able to highlight. I'll be able to take annotations that match the page I'm on as I'm taking that note and reading through this electronic document. And that's, that's if you have added that document to your collection, then you're marking up your own version, right. your own copy of it. And thus a student. So a student sees this in TWIN. They have their own view of this document and are retaining their own notes for this document. It is theirs. So that highlighting, that note taking is all allowed um, for each and every user and retained for that particular user of the document. You're able to make it full screen, read it as large or as small as you'd like, um, especially for accessibility. You can make it as large or as small as you want within that realm. And this is also another enhancement that we're constantly making better. So you should feel free also to give us any feedback on the document viewer or anything you see here when you're on the site. Um, so that's what it will look like when the student sees it in TWIN. They're going to see this same document as it is here. Okay? Because what the student doesn't know is when they're clicking on a, a document that you have added to their TWIN course, they're actually coming to us and seeing this nice picture. And so it... It works really well for the student as well. Yeah. For West publications that aren't on Westlaw, such as the Nutshells that Steve mentioned, Horn Books, yeah. will you be able to put that stuff on Twin for students to read, even though it's not part of Westlaw? You will be able to. And mm -hmm. but just like if you they would have had to purchase it from a bookstore mm -hmm. for your class, mm -hmm. they'll purchase it from us electronically. Well they'll purchase the nutshell. Yes. And then you can send that portion of the nutshell to them. Exactly. That's and I'll show you that part because that's a once again very a very good question. So You'll see prices on here. If there's West material that, and it's not prices for you, the site is free, but it's prices like I've adopted this, and if my student wanted to get it, they'd have to go to the bookstore and pay for it. Same idea. The only difference is, is they prefer the electronic version for potentially a different cost structure, which Pat will talk about. Um, then they can access it right here, pay through our west.townsend.com. They're set, ready to go, start reading, highlighting, doing, do whatever you want. And eventually, as Steve said, you'll be able to piecemeal a lot of our content. So maybe you only need certain sections of something, thus helping your students to kind of keep, keep costs down and also pinpointing the exact materials you'd like that student to have access to. Um, this document viewer, you'll also be able to, and what we're incorporating between now and August, is um, a site link function. So another reason why this is wonderful for a student and yourself is this will be linkable. Um, also, we're working on allowing external sites. So let's say your document that you're loading had a YouTube link to a certain classroom session. That will come through on this document and the student could click, click to it on an external site. And or this will click right to Westlaw if it's a site linked case or a rule, statute, regulation, whatever that may be. So that instant integration is there for your student as well. Yeah? I probably know the answer to this. <laughs> let's, let's assume that you want to use a you want to use this as a primary, whatever you want to call it, delivery method. And you want to use a study tool that Lexis offers in electronic form. Are you guys going to have an agreement with Lexis so that the student could again, <coughs> purchase it and end up here so that they can annotate and that sort of thing? Are you going to do anything like that? Well, um, 
It'll be open based in the sense that you could actually just link them to potentially the URL to the document. Do you, do you kind of mean like if they're using Blackboard or a different no, system? No, I mean, let's say you're using this, but instead of Nutshell, oh. I want to use uh, Lexus Q and Book. Oh, I see what you're saying. The answer is no, and that's beyond our pay grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's beyond our legal abilities. Oh, I think. Having, having one time sat in a room with, with this guy, Burnett, with the Aspen folks, with lawyers all around, many years ago, <laughs> with antitrust lawyers, honest to gosh, in Boston, uh, with Rick and remember all those folks? Uh, so we, we would, as a professor, I would love that. I would love that. Well, they would uh, and, too, and that, because you're selling their product. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know, but <laughs> I, I understand it. All I'm saying is, if it were up to the us peons, uh, that we would absolutely, we, we would encourage that, uh, but it, that's really, uh, we'd have to spend three days in Egan digging down, digging up, <laughs> trying to find who can make that decision. I hope, and as a, as someone who advises Wes, uh, you know, I advise that all the time. I advise those kinds of those kinds of deals, and I hope, but but that has not been discussed anywhere by anybody. Have I said we ought to do it? Yes, uh, but they ain't. But typically, they don't listen, and <laughs> well, they, they want to push their own products. But it's 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 a little narrow, short-sighted. If if a professor wants to use something, they're going to use it. Yep. And why not use the delivery method? Lexus makes money. West makes money. I, you're absolutely right, and I hope they I hope they get there. But I'll be dead. We haven't had any of those. Just for the record, I'll say again, we haven't had any of those discussions. No. With, with but I but I hope they I hope they do. And I, I'd love for Aspen to. To, to get together with, uh, with, the, with the folks at Eagle. That's a great, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's purely, like you say, a business decision and a copyright decision and a permission decision. Um, yes, and so, and right here is where I could easily link to the person who loaded the content and or the author of the content, contact them if necessary, or take a look at their profile. Um, I'll show you a different profile, and it's an also, it's an easy way, and I'll show you Steve's, I think, Yours is public, but um, it's an easy way to also see what that colleague is doing because what you'll see is you'll be able to see their materials, you'll be able to see their favorites, what groups they're a part of. But this, in essence, is the document. You're always able to see what type of copyright or licensing permission they're saying they have on the document. That link is always available to take care and make certain that you're using it pro appropriately. Uh, this is where your document description and detail will be. We eventually hope to have uh, results plus, so that when you're running a search, you're also running a search on Westlaw, which might be nice if you're literally looking for something in a certain topic area. Maybe it's actually an ALR on Westlaw, and, and you can go back and forth between the two as well. Uh, and then this is where you'll be able to allow comments. Currently on this document, it's disabled. Uh, right now, it's just kind of an on-off thing. Do you want people to comment on what you've loaded to the site, or do you not? But we know through feedback that um, authors and faculty members want more capability when it comes to moderating their document. Maybe they would love people to leave comments, but they would like to moderate those comments, take a look at them, see what they are, decide to publish them or not. I mean, that's a valid um, feedback and a valid request for documents, so we're building that out right now, and we'll enhance the comment feature on each of these documents. And so that's kind of the document view, and I think, um, gosh, did I show you groups? Probably. I'll just swing through that and then pass this over to to Pat. I'll just see if I can find a quick colleague. Let me see if I can. I wonder. I think my you won't see me on there. By the way, <laughs> I won't be on the site. But I just wanted to show you that. Let's say I was an author. You could see the documents I've favorited on the site, materials I've up uploaded, groups I'm a part of. All of that. So if you found somebody of interest on here and wanted to see what they were using in their class, or you know this other person that you um, had talked to prior to, let me see if, Steve, if you have yours public. No, it's private. But anyway, all of that can be made public or private depending on what you want as a user of the site. If you make your, your uh, profile private, you just see your general. Um, you may or may not even have a picture, but it will say pretty much what you could find on any Google search anywhere, just where you teach in your name. And if you want more to be shown, it'll be shown. So it just kind of depends on how you want to use the site. And then last but not least are groups. I'll just quickly go to create a group. The groups are meant to, once again, be as broad or as 
um, minute as you'd like them to be. You can make it private so that just me and my three faculty members can exchange content, uh, teach class, talk about what's going on in our class, or as public as, you know, I just really want this large group where we talk about how law education is changing in the 21st century. And so I'd like anybody and everybody to participate and add materials and, and just be a part of this group. So that will all be there. And then the other one is a controlled public, which really means I would love this to be found in a search, but I just, you know, I want it for intellectual property professors, so I would just like to control my membership slightly, but I would like for you to find it and just request to join. Very simply done. And then you would have a group. From there, uh, in the groups you'll be able to, uh, blogs will be a part of it. Just click on your paper login. Eventually we'll have blogs, wikis, all of that as part of your group. Um, we're working and receiving quest, requests that some of this be public facing, and so we'll work on that as well for you. And it pretty much allows you the same kind of message board, so keep ideas <coughs> together in a group fashion instead of a list serve or something similar to that where you're being bombarded. You come on here when you want, look and see what's going on. And with that, I will pass it over to Pat, and I hope I've given you Sparks is a very good resource for, for faculty to just pack. Fortunately, uh, the faculty academics have worked with the academics after many years. She knows a, a lot of you. She knows a lot of the, your faculty members. Uh, she, has, uh, she has she has published with, with a bunch of books. Uh, so her history is with hard copy books. Uh, and with faculty out there who've been publishing <laughs> hard copy books with Western Foundations for so she's going to be a really good resource to kind of you know, working with faculty about how they can make effective use. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. Um, yes, uh, Steve, of course, is bringing the law, the law professor perspective here. Heidi, the West development, and as Steve alluded to, I'm the West, but way on the other side. I'm the editorial person. I'm an old Westie. I've worked for West more years than I would care to admit, at least on tape. Um, and so that I'm all about content, content, content. And I leave, I leave the technical. Uh, bells and whistles to people who know way more about it than I ever will. Um, in that regard, um, we anticipate that there will be three very distinct product types that will be loaded to Law School Exchange. One of which um, will, will include West, Foundation Press, and Gilbert Law Publishing titles. Um, we are, have already started loading that material. Our first wave of materials are going to include teacher's manuals. If you look on there today, hopefully, if our colleagues back in Minnesota are doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, you would be you would uh, find uh, approximately a hundred teachers' manuals we've got out there, or will within the next day or two. Um, in that first wave, we're also going to be uh, loading nutshells, horn books, and concise horn books. Now, when we say loading, and I think Steve alluded to this earlier, nutshells and horn books, for example, you can find on Westlaw now. But this is different. This isn't a Westlaw display. When you look at page 17 of this specific nutshell, when you pull it up on Law School Exchange, it looks exactly like page 17 in the print product. It's the same font, it's the same spacing, it's the same page breaks, it's the same everything. Um, it's the print book in digital with all the bells and whistles where you can highlight and take notes and et cetera, et cetera. But the first wave of materials, um, we expect to have loaded within a couple of weeks. Uh, we should have that complete. The second wave in this first bucket that I'm, uh, this first uh, product type that we're going to get loaded, will include the remainder of our study aids, um, black letters, uh, acing series, uh, concepts and insights, turning point, just about any study aid that you can think of will be loaded to Law School Exchange. In that second wave of this bucket, uh, we're also going to be loading some of our adoptable materials. We're going to be loading some case books, um, some summer supplements, um, hopefully some selected, um, our selected statutory materials, all again with an exact page-per-page -page representation of what you, of what you would see in a print, in a print product. Um, once we're done with that first uh, wave of materials, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, excuse me, the first two waves of materials, um, we will, uh, uh, a law professor will be, avail will, will be able to review those um, online um, instead of sending out the comp, uh, comp copies of materials to a, we come up with a new civil procedure casebook and we try to figure out who is teaching that subject matter this year and we take a good guess as to who that would be and send them out and we never know if they get to the, uh, the intended recipient. This way, 
as soon as we load these materials to Law School Exchange, it'll be available to any law professor um, instantaneously. It'll be quicker, faster, cheaper, greener. Um, we will be producing fewer print books. Um, we'll be shipping, but we won't be shipping as many print books. Um, and with the with the teachers' manuals that we're loading, an added level of, so, of, of security. Um, when we produce teachers' manuals, again, we don't really know who they should go to. We think we've got a good idea. We ship them out and we cross our fingers hoping that they land in the right hands, namely not in the student hands. Um, this enables us uh, to distribute it to a much wider group um, and with the added security that only with a faculty-specific Westlaw password can you access this material. Um, once we're done with uh, the first bucket, this wave one and wave two, these materials that I've mentioned, um, the second uh, product type that I think is something that is really is going to be new for us, for West and Foundation, is, as you can imagine as publishers, we often get proposals for really good quality material. Um, great author, great material, it's just the niche is narrow enough that producing in print um, just doesn't make sense. Law School Exchange will enable us to expand the breadth of coverage that we can provide. If somebody's got a great set of materials, seminar materials or whatever, that would perhaps only be used in a handful of classes or you know, a, a great set of material on fashion law, for example. Um, it could be um, a part of uh, Law School Exchange in this second bucket. Um, materials that are developed just for Law School Exchange. The first bucket is is kind of a print and electronic mirror of each other. The second bucket will be materials that are just developed for Law School Exchange that you'll find electronically only. We've also, Foundation Press and West have had their own proposal process. Um, we have also created a new proposal team who will be soliciting and trying to develop new products uh, simply for Law School Exchange. So that's the second piece of it. The third piece of it, um, Steve and Heidi have already alluded to, it's the self-publishing piece. Uh, where a, uh, for whatever reason, if a professor wants to produce materials and it doesn't fit in bucket one or bucket two, they can put those materials out themselves. Um, right now, um, a law professor could do that, share it with whomever they chose to, sh to share it with. Uh, in sometime next year, we do have to expect to have the e-commerce piece of it. And if you've created some great, a great set of, uh, of exercises that you've worked on for 10 years and, you know, you don't expect to make a million bucks, but it would be nice to get 10 bucks a shot or whatever, we hope to have that e-commerce piece of it um, in place uh, by this time next year. So for me, it's all about content. Um, by the end of the summer, we expect to have 500 plus titles and counting. Um, we're going to be adding new materials. We do have some limitations with our adoptable works, the casebooks. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, many of those casebooks include third-party content. Um, for which print permission had to be obtained, and we run into a bit of a problem here trying to uh, electronically display without those correct permissions. So you won't see as many um, uh, case books out there as quickly as perhaps you'd like to see, certainly not as close, closely as I'd like to see, but we're making great progress in that, and we're hoping to make this as rich an environment as quick as we possibly can. Um, I know we've run out of time. I know, did Aaron and Kelly, did we miss anything about the Law School Exchange <laughs> Twin Interface that we should try to raise or have to be covered. Have you planned on bringing up the, What's that? Have you planned on bringing up the development No, yeah, Heidi alluded to it a few times, just the fact that you know it, it will be very easy to pull materials here okay. into a twin mm -hmm. course. There also, ultimately, there will also be a mechanism on law school or west.com to for students to access material you've adopted outside of twins. So if you're not a, a twin fan, um, you'll be able to do that. If, if any of you are interested in learning more about that, I'll be at the booth uh, actually immediately after this, so uh, feel free to stop by or tomorrow uh, tomorrow afternoon or Kelly, um, Jeff, any of, any of our colleagues can, can talk to you a little bit more about that. That connection is, is already built. Um, we're working now through the, we're really close, we're testing it out, we're working through the, the, the student experience and, and for the e-commerce piece and making sure that that works as smoothly as possible. So if you'd like more details, we can talk about it. Uh, on level two. <laughs> and one last really sort of, it almost goes without saying at this point, but the, the password, your key to this site, are the same credentials that you use to log in to lawschool.westlaw.com, westlaw.com, um, so there's no need, you won't have a whole other set of credentials to get into the site. That is your key that allows us to know behind the scenes that you are a faculty member and that you are entitled to access to this site. Again, that's how we're keeping everybody else out. 
when you say just limited faculty access, what about staff, librarians? Are there different categories? Or do you, do you mean literally professors? Or I mean, what's your um, category? I, I think I can answer that. As yeah. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. Um, passwords behind the scenes from an academic perspective are categorized in faculty slash personnel slash staff okay. and everybody else. Okay. So it'll be all of those personnel folks sure. that have personnel passwords and not students. Okay, that's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes. Anything else that we might have a lingering question on? And just anything? Hey. Hey, Heidi might kick me in the shins later for mentioning <laughs> this, but um, the conversation doesn't have to end here. We're pretty good about WebExes. If you have a group of faculty at your schools that would like to learn more about this, um, you know, we're happy. We're always happy to set up about 30 minutes, you know, WebEx or, or hour or whatever, uh, just to answer questions and and uh, address you know, specific. If you're at a you're a you have a library director that wants to do it, you know. An, Look at the possibility of an e-reserve um, type of platform. You know, we can talk specifically about that. So. Yep, and that's more of a high five, not a kick to the shin. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's the best point of contact for requesting something like that? Me, maybe. Yeah. Oh, but Aaron actually has cards, so I'm going to say Aaron. I'll kick you in the shins later. I brought. Obviously, at the booth, I have more. I'll just leave. Um, I'll just leave